All right, so most uh, internet trends are quick to come and go. Seems like there's always a new internet trend or a fad or something that everybody is doing. One that seems to be here to stay are simply internet memes, different types of memes. And some of the classic picture memes that still circulate, I see them all the time, are the ones that I really enjoy actually is expectation versus reality. How many guys love those, those memes? <laughs> like this is the expectation of what you thought your hair would look when you fixed it or your boyfriend or girlfriend or the college you're going to get into or the food you're going to make or whatever it may be. And then it shows reality and I always enjoy those. Um, so I have a couple of really quick ones. These may not be the best ones that broke the internet, but I snagged them. Christmas theme, um, expectation versus reality. We'll start with ver the first one. How many of you guys are not very uh, crafty? You've tried to do some Christmas crafts and ends up kind of like this. Expectation versus reality. Next photo. Um, how many guys you get drugged to like the Christmas parades? Your family's ever taken you one of those? It's going to be so much fun. And you get out there and there's crowds of people and you can't see anything. Um, expectation versus reality. Next slide. Um, Christmas cookies. Yeah. How many of you guys uh, bake cookies? You guys do that as a family? Yeah, yeah. We still do that with the kids. Now, the cool thing about sugar cookies is it don't matter what they look like. They all taste good, right? Next slide. Expectation versus reality. How many of you guys... We're absolutely terrified of Santa growing up. Any of you? Some of you are, you are that kid. They're like, all right. You're like, ah, no, God. So far, we've been pretty good with our kids. Our kids have been pretty good. Nora, I don't know. We'll see. We got Christmas Santa photos coming up in like this next Saturday, two weeks. We'll see. She might be reality down here. We'll see. Next photo. All right. <laughs> Is any one of you, I think I saw on the Robinsons, it's Barrett, likes to put the star on top of the tree. <laughs> Anybody else like to, you like to put the, the star, the Christmas topping on top of the tree? <laughs> Good times. All right, next photo. Um, wrapping. How many guys not so good at the Christmas present wrapping? That would be a great struggle of mine. I, I can do it. I'm a little bit crafty, but it takes me, like, way too long. I'm not very efficient rapping. This seems a little more realistic. Just throw it in the bag it came in type, you know, because at the end of the day, it's what's underneath that counts, right? Amen. Next photo. Uh, Christmas trees. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Very sad. How many of you guys already have your Christmas tree up? Yeah? Whoa, man. How many of you guys, okay, how many of you guys put your Christmas tree up before Thanksgiving? How dare you? No, some of you guys are pre-Thanksgiving. In my house, it's got to be after Thanksgiving day, and then you can put it up. Yeah, that's a, next slide, what do we have? Yeah, more decorating, baking, <laughs> poor thing, not even close. Next slide. This is uh, <laughs> cute family photos. How many guys got some Thanksgiving photos? Every holiday, you got to get together and take Christmas photos or Thanksgiving photos. Next slide. This would be Atlanta. Expectation, once every 15 years snow versus reality, it's probably just going to rain on the holidays. How many guys remember the last snow in Atlanta? It was like a couple years ago. You guys praying every night for snow? Maybe. This may be the year. I don't know. We may get some snow. But when we do have snow in, in Atlanta, typically it's a little bit of ice and like a half an inch of snow. And then the snowman, expectation versus reality, it's usually pine straw, leaves all rolled up. That's pretty much expectation versus reality. And we got one more uh, decorating photo, expectations versus reality. All right, so this Christmas uh, holiday season, it can be somewhat hectic. There's always lots of hustle and bustle. Some of you guys are counting down the days of school uh, that are left before you get out. How many of you guys know off the top of your head right now? 13, summary 12. Man, you guys are on it. That's awesome. 
Some of you guys uh, are trying to buy Christmas presents. You're just hoping, hoping that there aren't any major shortages and shipping delays. That seems to be a fear this year. Others are putting out Christmas decorations around the house. Most of you seem like you're ahead of the game on that. Some of you are hanging up Christmas lights or your family are. Some of you may be decorating and baking. There's always multiple holiday festivities. There's church musicals and plays and parties and other traditions. And unfortunately, because of the reality of where we're at, I hate it with social media, many people will view this holiday season, though, through the lens of social media and what you see everybody else doing. Lots of people do that. And as a result, there can be a lot of false expectations, false expectations of what Christmas should be. This is, you think now, because of what you've seen everybody else doing, this is what Christmas should be for me. This is what Christmas should look like for my family. And I can't tell you this enough, as many times as I can throughout the year, do not fall into the comparison trap. Amen? Not now, not any time of the year. It's so dangerous and unhealthy, and it always ends badly. Don't compare yourself to what other families look like or what other families do and their traditions or even what others even receive for Christmas. That's a great way to be very um, ungrateful for what you do receive. It doesn't compare, you may think, in the eyes of what somebody else. You get something small and then they get a pony for Christmas. You're like, what? Don't do that. Don't let your Christmas be held to some false commercialized or social, social media standard. As followers of Jesus Christ, very simply, we must remember the reason for the season. And the reality is, Christmas, it's all about the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But even when it comes to Jesus working in our lives, uh, we need a good dose of biblical reality. So I want to talk to you for just a few minutes, it won't be long tonight, about this Christmas expectation versus reality. Everybody say expectation versus reality. Now in the book of Matthew and Luke, we find the Christmas story. And I really encourage you as Christians, why don't you take some time now um, through the end of Christmas and read in these different books of the Bible, the Christmas story, Matthew and Luke. But even with the very first Christmas, there were a lot of false expectations of Jesus versus the reality of who he was and what his true purpose would really be. When Mary and Joseph, when they came to present Jesus at the temple, it was said of this in Luke 2.34. Then Simeon, he blessed them, and he said to Mary, the baby's mother, so this child, he's destined to cause many in Israel to fall And there will be, he will be a joy to many others. He has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. Now, there's going to be two different outcomes of Jesus because of some people's expectations and the reality of what Jesus really was intended to be and to do. Now, all the way back to the Old Testament, there were many miraculous prophecies that this gave us realistic expectations of Jesus. Hundreds of years before he was born, the details of his life were prophesied, foretold to his people. In fact, there were over 300 different prophecies given that Jesus fulfilled in his life. But originally, these prophecies were supposed to bring God's people hope and to look forward to the day when their Savior would bring eternal salvation from their sins. But I want to share for a few minutes today how their culture and how the difficult circumstances of their lives gave them false expectations, and they missed the reality of Jesus' purpose. I want to share the very challenging and pressing situations that influence these false expectations. For thousands of years, the people of God had gone through different seasons of captivity by Egypt, by Babylon, by Persia, and Greece. And during the times of Jesus... If you read of this, the Jews were under the rule of Rome. So they were in bondage and under control. But not only did the Romans have very strict control, burden them with taxes, but they also influenced their culture and their religious beliefs. 
And the Jews are simply put, they were really miserable and they had a great resentment for Rome during this season, this time of Christ. But as we read the beginning of the Christmas story, we find more of these effects and the influence of Roman rule on their lives. You read about Caesar Augustus. He made the Jews all return to their place of descent for a census, an unnecessary trip that they didn't want to do, something very inconvenient. It was accounting of the people and taxation. Here we read of Joseph and his wife Mary in the last stages of her pregnancy with Jesus in the middle of the Christmas story, but it is all there because of the influence and the control of Rome. But in the midst of this busy and overcrowded city of Bethlehem, we read this great story that we'll focus on this season now. Jesus was born, born in a manger wrapped in strips of cloth, swaddling clothes, but also in very poor and disgusting conditions. Now, this isn't the main point of my message, but just a side thing for somebody tonight. It's amazing to me that God Almighty was born in a manger, a smelly environment with unclean, dirty farm animals, but that was still not too low of a place for the King of kings and the Lord of lords to be born. And I want to pause this to share with you that no matter where you are, a reminder for teenagers to hear this all the time, no matter where you come from, no matter what mess you may find yourselves in, Jesus Christ, who's holy and righteous, he will still come down to you. So many times people mess up so badly, they feel, or, they, or their family environment so terrible that they feel like God Almighty, this holy, wonderful God, would not come down to me. But that is absolutely the opposite. Jesus Christ, he showed us that example when he came to this earth, born in this lowly mess of an environment, that expectation that Jesus Christ will come to you. In fact, Romans 5, 8 says this, but God, he showed his great love for us, for you, by sending Jesus Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And it's a, a, an emphasis, again, that at your lowest point, in the midst of whatever sin, in your most despicable sin of your life, that Jesus Christ still saw you and he still chose to die for you. God was still thinking of you. And that's pretty awesome that we serve a God that cares about us that much. Amen? So as we continue with our story, we see about the birth of Jesus. It was quite this heavenly celebration. And the Bible says an angel, he appears to the shepherds. And he said this in Luke 2, verses 10 and 11. But the angel reassured them, the shepherds, don't be afraid, he said. I bring good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. Then the Bible goes on to tell us that suddenly there's a multitude of angels, the heavenly host, praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and then this message was given, and on earth, peace and goodwill towards men. So those shepherds, it's pretty awesome, the first Christmas, and they're there, and they're experiencing that. And then this miraculous, majestic display of God's power, of angels before them that they actually saw and heard. Those shepherds obviously were pretty pumped. And they went abroad, the Bible says, and they told everybody what had happened, but they also told them about Jesus and what was said about Jesus. But remember, the reality was that Jesus had come to save them from their sins. That was his purpose for coming. But once again, because of everything that they had gone through, because of their current circumstances that they lived in, their pressing needs, the influences in their life, those people had this false expectation that Jesus was there to save them from Rome. They had this false expectation versus the reality of what Jesus was really there to do. Word began to spread that finally the Savior, the one that was prophesied in Isaiah 9-6, who had put the government on his shoulders, was one of the prophecies, and they, they locked on to those words. There was the one who was prophesied, Micah 5-2, would be the ruler of Israel. That's one of the phrases, and they locked on to that had arrived. 
The one who's going to bring peace on earth, right? They're like, they're thinking world peace. And the king of Israel had finally come. They were initially, they were filled with hope and excitement because of their expectation versus the reality of Jesus' true purpose. Sadly, the outcome of the next series of events, it didn't match those expectations. The news of Jesus spread to Herod, who felt his earthly throne was being threatened, this King Herod. He thought Jesus was there to take his earthly position as well. And that's why the Bible tells us a retaliation. This king initiated a massacre of all the baby boys two years and younger. I can imagine there at that time the anger, the state of pain, the unrest that the nation, the people of God were in. That doesn't sound like anything but peaceful at all. No, more than ever, they look for Jesus to deliver them. Like surely he's going to set up this earthly kingdom and he's going to free us from Rome and this persecution. But this misconception of Jesus continued throughout his life and his ministry. All throughout his life. And years later in Jerusalem, these people still, they shouted praises to God for the works that he had seen Jesus do. And they said, Hosanna. This is in Matthew 21. Save us when he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. They weren't talking about save us of our sins. Save us from our current conditions. They initially treated him well like a conquering king. They thought that he would be But Jesus didn't come to this earth to build an earthly kingdom. He didn't come to have political power and position. And therefore, he did not fulfill the people's false expectations. In their eyes, Jesus had failed to do what they expected their Messiah to do. In their disappointment, the Jews rejected Jesus. They rejected him and they fulfilled this prophecy of Isaiah 53 3 that he was despised and he was rejected. A man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest griefs. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. For thousands of years, Israel had been the one nation that embraced God and embraced his holy word. While these other nations, the Gentiles, generally rejected him and lived in spiritual darkness. But now, Israel rejected the prophesied Messiah. Spiritual blindness fell on the eyes of the Jewish people when they should have been the most spiritually discerning people. But because Israel hardened their hearts, they missed out on a special opportunity with Jesus Christ. And not only did it affect their relationship with him, but future generations. And it's just a a tragic and a sad story, one that could have been so much different, a story that was filled with the potential of hope and salvation, but all because when it came to that first Christmas and thereafter, they had falsely influenced expectations versus the reality of the true purpose of Jesus Christ. So as soon as I I simply have two challenges for you today. Short message, short point. I want you guys to carry throughout this holiday season. First, very simple. You'll hear this line, but I want to say it a different way. But don't forget the reason for this Christmas season. Don't allow outside superficial influences to create some false expectation of what Christmas should look like for you or even for you and your family, but rather understand the reality of the word of God and the reason of the season. Simply put, at Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Christmas is about Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, which means God is with us. We celebrate how God Almighty, he lowered himself down to the level of his creation, a lowly place, and God robed himself in flesh. And then, throughout his life, at the culmination of his life, he brought salvation when his, through his death, his burial, and his resurrection, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what started at Christmas. Jesus, he came to this earth to take on the sins of the world so that through him we could have salvation and everlasting life. We repent of our sins. We're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and we are filled with the best gift 
you will ever receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So not only should that bring great joy into our lives and great hope all year long, but especially in this season. It should inspire us to share the true meaning of Christmas and to tell others about Jesus and to bring true joy to the world. Let's make sure that we remember, first of all, the reason for the season. Let's not get distracted. Let's not fall in the comparison trap of what others say Christmas should be or should look like. Let's remember the reality of who we are and why Jesus came. Second, I don't want you to lose sight of the ultimate purpose and the will of God. This is the second thing to remember tonight, the final thing. Just like the Jews at the very first Christmas, in your life, you may expect God to work on your behalf in a very specific way and even at a very particular time. Now, it's okay to pray and it's okay to have faith, but so many times, like those early Jews, they just absolutely had convinced themselves that this is why God came and this is what Jesus Christ was about to do, but that couldn't have been any further from the truth. If you're not careful because of your own wants or your own desires for Jesus, you can have unrealistic expectations for God. And just like those early Jews, when it doesn't happen like you expected, it can be easy to get disappointed. It can be easy to get upset, to be discouraged in some cases, and for some people to lose their faith because of false expectations versus the reality of what Jesus Christ really wants to do in your life. But don't get bitter, because just like the very first Christmas story, God could be working on something so much bigger and so much better. The Jews were just thinking of the here and now, but God, Jesus Christ, came for a much greater plan. And the same in your life. You may have some disappointments. You may have some false expectations. You're discouraged. God didn't come through like I thought he would. God didn't heal like I thought he would. God didn't repair my family like I thought he would. That might be the expectation that you had but the reality is God could be at work for a greater purpose for a greater reality that you may never know the reality of the will and the ways of God is explained Isaiah 55 8 through 9 and he simply says my thoughts students are nothing like your thoughts says the Lord and my ways are just far beyond anything that you could even imagine for just as the heavens are higher than the earth so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. When you have that moment of expectation, it doesn't really meet the reality of what God is doing. Just remember, God's got it. God's in control. He hasn't left you. He hasn't forgotten you. His ways are so much higher and greater than yours. And be reminded that he's in control. He doesn't make mistakes just like those early Jews, they surely they thought that God, that Jesus missed it, that that wasn't the real Messiah. He's not left you or abandoned you. And Romans 8, 28 tells us that. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Your simple choice, students, of trusting in God can make the difference for future blessings and miracles to come. Yes, the, the Jews as a whole, they rejected Jesus Christ. But that special people, the Gentiles, they embraced him. And because of that, we're greatly blessed for it. So don't lose sight of the ultimate purpose and the ultimate will of God.